the deep gravity of Allah and who asked about the ayat on Holy Bhattul the, 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 the people you think they're doing good now, but they're going to be overthrown and the others going to come back. So that means the Christian forces. So, uh, the Prophet, peace be upon him, told Abu Bakr Sadiq to increase the bet and increase the time. So, this won't be in the next two, three days. So, increase the bet but and increase the time. And that's the way it come out. Okay. Uh, the last thing we want to say is that um, this invasion of the West Coast is uh, it's going to be a nice experience. Uh, we should also realize that we're not stupid enough to fight other Negroes. But we're not afraid of Negroes would have kill another Negro card in his pocket that you can kill Negroes. This idea of feasibility law as the Fed said, martyrdom, he didn't realize there's different times in, in your life. You're always prepared for martyrdom, but sometimes you juiced up for it. You know what I mean? You be, I remember there's times when I was just juiced up, ready to go. Whatever happens, now, this is just my understanding, reading from what we have. We've done a great job. And eventually, that story will be told, whether we tell it or not, but the story will be told about this period, the period we've already went through. Yeah, they, they can't keep that quiet. That, that, uh, and we believe that uh, we're going all the way to the top on all the stuff we had broke down, just like all of the stuff came out, this other stuff will come out too, inshallah. If we're as accurate with that stuff as we is with this stuff, then it'll be, it'll be it's a repeat. In other words, that's why we always have to keep our Intentions not pure, because it's hard to be pure but clean. That's why we said the other night, no matter what happened, if with the fans, whatever they meant, it don't make no difference. We're going to be clean on what we we are not joining the dirty club, or uh, we'll make some diversion to get something else. The Fed, the police said that uh, if uh, some uh, relative or something, they have some, he didn't even get it all out, but his hint was uh, that you gotta, you know, along with this other stuff of not seeing us anymore, you gotta, you know, a little what the, a lot of people don't believe it, but the feds always give out a license. In other words, you know, you can do what you want for a little while, and then that won't cost you nothing. But I'm not doing none of that. Why? Because I'm not going to be in the bed with the white man. Simple as that. Now, anybody can say what they want, but I'm not taking no. We said the same thing all the time. Cease and desist. Just leave us alone. That's all. Just you go about your business and leave us alone. We'll take care of everything. And we'll take care of their business too. You know what? It's hard for them to believe 
that Negroes tell the truth to them. Yeah. So they can do what they want. But I'm going to close with this. Look, this life has been so uh, interesting. <laughs> uh, was you at the class the other day? Uh, I know I you was. When I was talking about success and failures. Yeah. And how you look at things. Yeah. I said, if, if I looked at person in my life, I could say, well, you're a failure because you were going in and out of jail when you was a kid and you missed all of the kid stuff that people was doing. Then you started to you tried to start a, a whole black enterprise and you didn't organize all the black people for uh, Black Mafia is what they was called. Then you tried to help people in Africa, but it wasn't enough for a revolution. So you, you actually failed. Then you come back here and go to the penitentiary. You tried to beat your case with the white man and it failed. And you wanted to establish Masada all over the country, and you didn't do it. You could say it was a failure. In South America, you tried to cut off the Colombians down there and bring the Negroes in to run interference, and so they would stay down there with all the blow and give it to you, and you would have it all up here. And they would never do like they got it for the last 40 years, control, that the Negro would control it. And I could look at it like that, or I could look at it the other way. I could say, yeah, the white man uh, rolled on you and all your friends, and all of them are gone. You know, each flea the drum little George Jackson. Those are those people are all gone, yeah. and the system finished them. They clear what they did. They, they okay. So if we have a, a black nationalist organization that is the only one that existed in the United States at that time, from before up to that time, and then after, there haven't been none. And we was only 21, 22, 23, stuff. We was like almost kids, wet nurse kids almost. And had the most serious black enterprise zone in the United States. Oakland was just the right size. So we could say we were a total success. If we did better than everybody else 10 times over, we were a success. Right? So it's how you look at it. Going down to Columbia, now I know the government's involved, but you cannot be a dummy and buy cocaine, transport the cocaine, you know, up here and then have it distributed. You cannot be no dummy and do that. Over and over again, you can't be a dummy. Some people have to say, you're almost brilliant. That's what most people say. You, you have to have sense to do that. So, we can say we were a success for Africa. Everybody knows that was a success when the brothers needed help more than anybody. More than any, we was there to help them. Didn't nobody else. We did. That was a success. And it's this thing here. We just read what it is. We just skipped it. This, what we've been doing here, is a huge success. Bigger than those other successes. 
we actually wrote what we was going to do, analyzed what we was going to do, set what we was going to do, and cruised to doing it. Now, you got to remember, I'm not saying this was easy, but it was coonery. We could just play like, uh, we could do what we want. Last 16 years, we've been doing what we want. <laughs> it's coonery. And it worked. This, whatever anybody say, this stuff has worked 100%. And all the people like Mutmale, Mukhtar, and that whole Oakland crew is sitting right there before the public. Everybody sees them for what they was, for what they are. We have uncovered the whole system of tattletaleism in the United States and part of the world because they didn't figure you're going to last. So we did, they do it in front of you. Muhammad al seen them would do stuff in front of us. You're a nigger. You're not going to survive. This is the way they're thinking. They're looking at you like, you're not going to beat this. We are. And I'm looking at them like, I don't know, I don't know what's going on. What are you doing? I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> right? No, I mean, if you look, there are certain characteristics that say that you need in order to just cook the whole. When you step on the battlefield, you got to see all the advantages, disadvantages, and the lay of the battle, what's going to help, what's going to hurt, and you got to be able to put it together that right then. You don't get a two-week study pro program. If you happen on the battlefield, you got to be able to look, feel, and see, and institute right away. That's what we've been able to do. All of this, none of this stuff is haphazard. None of this stuff was made up. All of it is just like, it's just like we wrote it. That, that's unbelievable. In America. Okay, that put a lot of that put a lot of uh, of, uh, of responsibility on us. So. And our responsibility, I don't want to say it, but make America great. Yeah, why not? What the heck? You know, America needs help. The thing is, the last thing I want to mention is no one was ever surrounded the way we were. When we are doing what we do, we give everybody a chance to do whatever To ascend to the level that they're capable of. That was in Jahiliya and that's in Islam too. We never held nobody back. Remember we would sit here and Abdul Malik would be running his mouth and you would think that I was a janitor or something. Yes. Right? Yeah, before I got hip to that stuff, that stuff was mine. Bobby. Yeah, but no, no, it's okay. It's okay, you have to do that. And, uh, that has several points. Number one, if he's not sincere, he's going to become more and more arrogant, which he did. As he become more and more arrogant, he gets loose. You know, it's just like when you're dealing dope or something. You start getting big money, you can either get tighter or looser. The first stage is looseness. You start snorting cocaine, partying, and you know, and you look up and you dead or you in jail, you don't look up and you're dead or dead, but you look up and it's all gone. Or you have to work so hard to put it back together. So, no, this is a counteroffensive, we won't mention that in Oakland. Freedom, liberation, justice, self-determination, de-Israelization,
Islamic movement with Islamic characteristics, <laughs> like Marxist Leninism and Chinese characters. <laughs> Some cool liberation movement, nonviolent invasion, uh, asymmetric in style, make use of human and material resources. And the last thing is control your state. That means control how you think, how you feel. Like you say, we could look at life like a failure or a success. It's up to us how we see it. A victory or a defeat. Most people look at a lot of stuff and say, oh, you guys got booked here, you got booked there. And we say, no, never got booked there. We actually uh, came out on top, and we got whipped less than anybody. You know, for what we are in the movement, they kill niggas for that. They kill them as soon as they figure out where they hit it. They kill them in a hurry. And we're here happy and healthy, and uh, getting our health back, and laughing and talking. So, we're happy as we can be and grateful because we know it can be different. And I'll close with this look at whether it's Libya, whether it's all the other people are having trouble, all big trouble. Big trouble. The world is, is, is in some type of a chaos. It's nice, peaceful here. Yeah. So, are there any questions or any comments about anything? Yeah, I do. Um, <clears throat> how do you, uh, you know, you were kind of talking about how, you know, you sitting about dealing with some of the other uh, speakers and leaders, and they just kind of down talking you, treating you like a child and stuff. In those situations, how do you, how have you trained to yourself to keep your ego in check? You know, like just to, you know, to, to not suffer those insults, but how do you, how do you manage that? You know? I, I, I know exactly what you're saying. To everybody else would be insulted. Right. But, uh, that's the way it was brought up. Remember, mm -hmm. we talked about the game that uh, my father was born in 1900. Right. So what they dealt with in those days were different we dealt with now. And my father had plenty of game. He, he, he hey man. Uh, but it wasn't the same. We would may not do that. But they had to have a certain attitude. They couldn't go down there telling the white man, brother, da, 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 da. and they was in Dixie too. They was down way down the down there to the to Louisiana. They was in Arkansas. Oh, shoot, you can't get no well, Father, they, Mississippi is right next door. Mississippi. So, it's a combination. It's a combination of the old Negro, which they don't know nothing about, and his psychology. Black militancy, and what we have now is Islam. They have access to studying and researching those last two. Yeah. Islam and black, national, black militancy. They were right there. But there's no FBI agent that was around in 1910, 1912, 1915, 1925. They wasn't there. Therefore, they don't even have in their brain. They don't have it. You know, institutional memory, you know what institutional memory is? Institutional memory, like your organization, yeah. uh, like your army has fought different types of people. And those people in that army have a institutional memory. But as they all get old and they go out, they lose that institutional memory. So when they come up against other stuff, modern stuff, 
old stuff, they can't deal with it because they don't have, they have their training, but they don't have institutional memory. The best way I can put it is the institutional memory. Uh, when you know who you are, one of the biggest things is to get people to laugh at you. And plus, I've never been, uh, personally, I just never, I can give you an example. When I was at a NRCC, that's called the Reception Center, and I guess I was 17, and I was going to Pine Grove Forest. It's like a receiving center, and, and yeah. the jails would go there, and all of them. Uh, I was in the company where the guys was 18. 17 and all that. So, I was always messing with everybody. So, one day something happened and everybody in the company was laughing at me. And I, I was just, I was right there with them, like it wasn't nothing. And the, the black officer, he was a, he really appreciated, he said, when I went to committed that's the reason I went to camp because he, he was a senior officer. He said, this guy is well adjusted because he can go mess with everybody. And when everybody turned on him, he so, you know, well, uh, we make it, uh, we having a good time. Okay, now, this stuff is strategic though too. Whether you talk about Muhammad Alasi and their arrogance and all, almost everybody, they, they have uh, a type of arrogance that comes from the system. The system and their confidence in the system makes them arrogant. I was with Muhammad Alasi and sometimes he was trying to make me paranoid. Airport in Missouri for one of them play Amsterdam. The reason he was doing that because in 1987 I was going through my last period of paranoia. You know, not paranoia, I was just sensitive at that time. I wouldn't even call it paranoia. Well, we sure wasn't afraid of nothing. So I came here to visit him. I came here technically to give him allegiance. Hmm. And we were talking out of IAC, and I was looking around. And that was the last, I was just finishing that period. He was thinking I'm going to stay in that period the rest of my life. I was in 87. 